well as for the full financial year 22-23. Amidst heightened global uncertainty, subsequent to geopolitical tensions and persistent inflationary pressures, another turbulence surfaced from in the form of banking sector turmoil in the United States. The failure of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank and problems in Credit Suisse Bank aggravated volatility in the financial market. IMF, in its latest World Economic Outlook, has projected a decline in global output growth at 2.8% for the current year and is expected to remain subdued subsequently in the following year. The emerging market and developing economies are expected to grow at a better rate at 3.9% in 23 and 4.2% in 24. Indian economy has shown resilience in navigating the turbulence in terms of sound macroeconomic fundamentals and well-regulated and adequately capitalized banking sector. Despite global headwinds and tighter domestic monetary policy, the GDP growth rate of FY23 has been estimated at 6.5% by the Reserve Bank. This higher growth projection is due to buoyant domestic private consumption supported by rebound in contact intensive industries, near universal coverage of vaccination, and capex trust on infrastructure by the government. The banking industry witnessed a comparatively higher advances growth of 15% and lower deposit growth of 9.6% in FY22-23, depicting release of pent-up demand in the economy. Traction in business activity and simultaneously exhibiting deposit mobilization, a major challenge for sustaining double-digit growth for credit in the future. Against this backdrop, the bank pursued a few strategic initiatives in the financial year 22-23, one of them being the trust on CASA growth and the retail term deposit growth. Secondly, continuous emphasis has been laid out to outreach campaigns for business growth as well as strengthening connect with the customers. The maintenance of asset quality and NPA management has always been our top priority and consistent measures taken for improving collection efficiency and NPA recovery. On technology front, several products on asset and liability side were made live on the e-platform. I am happy to announce that the bank's net profit for Q4 jumped by 17% to 1350 crores for the full year and the bank posted a net profit of 4023 crores, registering an increase of 18%. There has been improvement in NIM, which has moved up from 2.36% in March 22 to 3.01% in March 23, a rise of 65 basis points. Domestic NIM has also improved from 2.6% in March 22 to 3.43% in March 23. Asset quality has further improved with reduction in gross NPA from both amount-wise and percentage-wise, the gross NPA ratio was brought down to 7.31% in March 23 from 9.98% in March 22 and the net NPS to 1.66% in March 23 from 2.34% in March 22. Slippage ratio was brought down from 21.15% in March 22 to 1.94% in March 23. During FY23, the bank expanded its credit by 12.87% with an increase in RAM advances by 12.29%. During the current year, with onboarding of e-platform and end-to-end -end digitization in credit sourcing, processing and delivery, there will be a significant jump in the credit uptake. We expect credit growth of around 11-12% to during the current financial year. For augmenting yield on advances and NIM, the bank is aligning its asset growth to high yielding areas with focus on RAM advances and mid corporates. With the bank's continuous drive for managing asset quality, we expect gross NPAs to be contained below 7% as far as the GNPA is concerned and credit cost between 0.65% to 0.75%. We aim at maintaining NIM above 3%, thus ensuring sustainable growth in profits. I would again thank you for all the continued support. The floor is now open for any discussion and question and answer. Thank you so much.